Zadrian Smith, uh, interviewing Alex, and I mean, if you've been keeping up with us, the album dropped yesterday. You know, if you're like me, you listen to it all front to back and then press it on repeat over and over again. And Alex, just again, man, you know, 24 years old, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for using your artistry. Thank you for using your voice. And thank you for using your platform to, to convey so not one message, but just this multi-dimensional, multi-layered message that is so personal to you, but I think extends that will extend and touch masses of people. So just thank you for that. You know, thank you for thank you for creating a piece of work that's not self-indulgent or not self-serving, but really does have a purpose of affecting other people in, in a positive way, a really positive way. Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, I think about, I think about what you just said and, and how it's, you know, it's not self-serving. And I don't know if it's, if it's something about when you create from a vulnerable place or when you really pour your heart out into something, but I do view it as self-serving. You know, this album got me through a lot of stuff. Mm. This album got me through a lot of trauma that I had in my in my heart, in my mind. And so I think, again, when you create from your heart, the best outcome that you can get is something that really transcends who it's for or what yes. it's for. Because yes. while you, you know, we've mentioned already, Good Morning is so of the times, but I wrote it about my own life. Like, mm -hmm. I really, like, I really, all of the things that I say in Good Morning happened to me in one more in one day and i'm talking about that day after that saying damn all of this happened yesterday but i gotta get up and go and so well, that's, that's actually a really excellent point but when you when you were writing that or when you were putting these songs to get and the album together even though it was like you said it was for it was a lot for yourself did you did you not did you knowingly or kind of in your heart know that like i can't be the only person having this experience so i need to share this Oh man, I sure as hell hoped it. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing more embarrassing than when you're like, yo, you guys know when you're like, when you see your crush and you walk up to them and then you ask them, you know, how their day's going and then you accidentally like poop your pants and everybody's <laughs> like, ah, that's never happened. And you're just like, oh yeah. Right. Same. yeah. That's kind of like, that's kind of what the album was, you know? Like I, I thought to myself, and again, my my all my goal is always if this helps one person, mm -hmm. then it's fulfilled its 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 you know prophecy. It's fulfilled its purpose. And so when I put it out, obviously I was hoping like, damn, I really hope other people have issues in faith, and I really hope other people feel old for being twenty three, and I really <laughs> hope other people are having struggles waking up in the morning. Right. You know, and luckily they did. But yeah. you can't guarantee that. You know, I can't guarantee that when I write a song. You know, I think often I've even done it in my own life you write and you go, man, like I got to write for what the people need. Mm. And I, I think you can get, you can find yourself in a trap. You know, I found myself many times in a trap being like, oh, this is relatable. And you start, you got to stop thinking like that and start thinking, what am I really going through? Because right. thanks to social media, we think nobody else deals with problems and we think nobody else has dark moments. But when you really say, what am I going through? You find that we're a lot more connected than our social media accounts say we are. When you, when you speak your truth, there's so much power in speaking your truth and connectivity. Um, speaking of connectivity, you mentioned social media. What role has social media played in your career and building your career? Oh man, career-wise, it's, it's, it's been massive. You know, mm -hmm. I, I built an incredibly passionate and connected fan base on social media from you know, whether it's all the way back to working with Awesomeness TV and acting on Royal Crush to having my YouTube channel and, and, and you know, starting making mashups on YouTube. And, and that helped me learn how to produce while I was building a fan base so that now I can produce my own albums, you know, with my friends and I can produce my own records like Two Kids and Young Love. There, there are so many ways that social media not only impacted it directly, but there are so many byproducts of social media that happen that I learned other talents, that I learned other skills, video mm -hmm. editing, even recently on TikTok, like I decided to try like this video yeah, editing. Yeah, your TikTok videos are made, I'm always like, wait, how does he, like you have people, I don't even understand, it's another level. I'm just I, like, how is Alex doing this? I'm learning it as I go and, and it's almost like Karate Kid wax on, wax off because I come out of this TikTok thing and somebody's like, oh, can you edit this video for me? And I go, oh, I'm not a video editor. And they go, well, how did you do that TikTok? And I'm like, 
oh, I guess I do. I guess I <laughs> so, I mean, as social media, look, there's, there's so many, I'm not even going to lie. There are so many bad things about social media, whether it's the perception that we as a society put on ourselves, comparing our insides is my favorite quote is we compare our insides to everyone else's outsides. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many negative things that can come out of social media, but look at the way that we've been connecting. Like you'd mentioned, our next generation is so educated. And so I hate this word, but woke mm -hmm. because social media is, it is on, it's impossible to hide the truth like not the truth, but it's impossible to hide what's going on in the world because of social media. Right. Because if one person sees it, if one person watches a policeman murder a black man and films it, the whole world will find out. And we are now, we now know, and we hold people accountable for those things. And so social media has been incredible in so many ways. Right. Talk to me about, you know, so obviously we've had the Golf Club 23 come out in this period of uncertainty, but not only did you have an album come out, you also have been working on some, some films. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like a, lot, a lot of nothing, finding Ohana on Netflix. How are we navigating through that? Who, who is Alex the actor and how are we navigating through these films being released in this period of uncertainty, man? I mean, when I moved out here when I was, I think I was 14 and, and, and 15 and I started working and, and, Again, I, like going back to your original question, I was 16, 15 years old, 14 years old, and, and my answer to everything was yes. Can you sing? Yes. Can you play this instrument? Yes. Can you dance? Yes. One of the questions was, can you act? And I was like, yeah. And I remember as a 14-year-old kid going in for auditions after auditions after auditions and getting nothing. Right. Getting nothing. And it kind of really broke my confidence in, in acting. And so as we've navigated the following years that led us to last year mm -hmm. uh, and even the year before that and I had you know I give so much love to Peter DeSantis at UTA my acting agent who looked at me and said I think you could be an actor and I told him I was like dog I don't think so like I, I've done it I've tried it it's not it and Peter DeSantis being like can you trust me for a bit oh, wow. and I'll get you with a good coach I'll get you in the right, I'll get you in the right rooms and we'll get you some roles. And I'm like, still like, okay, I'll trust you. But I didn't believe it at all. And that's, again, I, I, I can never, the, the, the things that I've been lucky to achieve in my, in my 24 years so far, I take such little credit for it. And I give so much more credit to the team around me that when I don't believe in myself, even at that, I remember calling my manager and calling him before I walked into the room for finding Ohana for the first audition and saying, dude, I don't feel good. I feel terrible. And I remember his exact words and, and, and he'll even say it too. He said, dude, I have a great feeling about this audition. Just brush it off and go and crush it. Mm -hmm. And I booked it. It was my first ever feature film and it's on Netflix or it's going to be on Netflix. And it, you know, it, it could be great. It could be terrible, but nonetheless, when I had a team that believed in me, even in moments where I didn't, and then success happened, it built my own confidence. Right. And now I have, now, like you had mentioned, I've been able to book other acting roles. I've been able to discuss other acting opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and there, there's so much, now I'm just like having fun with it. Like, at, oh, honestly, right. like, I'm at a point where I'm just like. Well, that's the, I think that's when the journey gets, when you reach that point where you're not afraid and you have the confidence and you start having fun, I think that's when the doors and the opportunities that are meant for you start to just start coming right into your lap, you know? Absolutely. So we, we're coming to a close. I have two last requests for you. Uh, one is I, I hope that you might bless us with a couple of bars of any song of your choice from um, the yeah. album. And then two, before you do that, you said um, the biggest takeaway from this process was you said, I've fallen in love with my process, with my journey, and I can't tailor myself to be anybody else for anybody else. I got to be me. If there's one thing that you want people to take away from the gospel at 23, from, from, from this interview, what would you want it to be? The gospel at 23 really was the process that helped me fall back in love with like my process, with my, you know, life in general. And any, realistically, any goal that you have set is a marathon. And oftentimes you can become impatient. Oftentimes you can feel like you're not gonna make it you can feel like it's getting old or the game's getting played like i promise you if you're watching this you have any preconceived ideas of how i believed in myself over the last nine years of being in los angeles 
it's been an absolute roller coaster. I've had moments where I've been like, I'm done. I'm, gi- I'm giving up completely. And I've had moments where I felt like I'm on top of the world. I've had moments where I've made, a, I gotten a big, big check. And I've had moments where I've felt like I'm not gonna make another dollar in my career again. And that's really, to me, this album was such a beautiful process to help me fall in love with everything again. Fall in love with those low moments. Love being where I am. Love the marathon. Loving, and, and the, the term that we use on my team is like the mountain. Mm-hmm. And you're climbing the mountain. And even if you get to the top of the mountain, you go right back down and you climb it again and you go down. And some of the parts are like straight up. Some of the parts are like a nice, easy walk across. My hope as people listen to this album is that they are inspired to uh, search themselves and endeavor to fall in love with the process that is whatever their life has and feel seen in moments of weaknesses, feel related to in moments of darkness and also feel the permission to celebrate their moments of light and their moments of happiness. I think that to me is like, if some, if, if, and again, if that's with one person, if let alone however many people end up feeling that, then that's the whole purpose of the album in general. Right. Amazing. I love that. The permission to live in your light. Love it. Can I, can, can we, do we have permission to get a couple of bars from you? you know I can't, I can't not give you guys. A <laughs> give me a little something. Come on. <laughs> Not give you a couple of bars. <laughs> it wouldn't be complete. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that just really is hitting me right now. Hmm. Um, hmm. Okay, I got one. So okay. this one's a little bit. This one's this one's from uh, old AF. I'm gonna say just in case I get censored for <laughs> our Petri TV. Um, this is from old AF and it goes uh, the second verse because it talks through how it went. So it was like, 18 years old, I really thought I was going to hell. Had to binge every sin just to see for myself. I turned 20, I was back on my health. And it's funny because the money started making itself. I hit 21, they say, hey, you're an adult now. I'm like, what were those last five years about? I know it's only been a matter of time, but to me, it really feels like a matter of life. Alex Ayano, everyone. Alex, you are a blessing. Your album is a blessing. Thank you for your time and thank you for your artistry. And we're signing off. Good morning.